Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakak Kadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, through his only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shah, and double honors to the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone who told me his truth, and salutations to the elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. My name is Amor Gabar, and I'm back with another lesson. The Lord willing is quick, edifying, straight to the point. And as you see in the title of this video, the majority of these people don't even know what's about to hit them. All right. The majority of these people don't even know what's about to hit them. And of course, I'm talking about prophecy and the inevitable things that's getting ready to take place on this planet Earth. Here it is. People, you know, concerned about, of course, it's things that we report on such as, such as these major, this ma the major signs in the heavens that's getting ready to go down. The, the, the solar eclipse, you know, different astrological, celestial things happening, things happening on the earth, you know, earthquake, uh, Taiwan got hit with a, a 7.4 yesterday, you know, which is a huge earthquake, you know, um, there's still tension building up in the Middle East, so-called Middle East between Israel, the land of Israel and the Palestinians, Gaza, right? Um, things happening here in the shores of America, but as far as civil unrest you know everybody's focused on elections election time is right around the corner you know just just so much different shit happening but as it stands the majority of these people don't even know what's about to hit them they don't know what's about to hit them you know they think they know you know they, they more so concerned about you know the theatrics of this whole of the whole matter but they don't know what's about to hit them and that's how the heavenly father purposely designed this thing to happen right now I do have, I do have some, you know, a few precepts, and I may jump around to an article. But before, send this phone. Before I get that, uh, I get that precept. Let me do this real quick. I want to read Luke chapter twenty-one, and I start at the point is at the point is at thirty-five. But I want to read up some because this is the time that we're living in. These are the times we're living in. All right. So this is the book of Luke chapter twenty-one and verse twenty-five. It says, "And there shall be signs." In the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations. And the Lord, as is written in the book of um, Genesis, the Lord set the, the the ordinances up in heaven for for signs. All right, hence the moon, you know, the sun and the stars. Okay, so it says, and upon earth, the stress of nations. We are in a time where these nations are fully, you know, just to total distress. It tells us that in Proverbs that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule. The people mourn. The people are in distress. They mourn it because the ham of the earth, as it tells us in the book of Jeremiah, the ham of the earth is ruling. All right, the left hand side of the heavenly Father, that rod that the Lord set up for these nations to drink that cup. These Edomites, they're the ones that are ruling. So these nations are in distress, and I won't be surprised if the U.S., you know, Babylon used the, you know the heart program over there in Taiwan. I would not be surprised. All right, nonetheless, it's the heavenly Father, you know, that's doing everything. So it says, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity and the seas and waves roaring. Japan is on a, a, a tsunami watch due to that uh, earthquake in Taiwan. You know, they're on a tsunami watch and that's the waves roaring, storms and tsunamis and so on and so forth. And perplexity, nations with perplexity means confusion. Great confusion is about to smack these people in their face. They don't know what's getting ready to come. Yeah, you got people uh, putting the pieces together. As far as connecting the dots, solar eclipse this, Alistair Crowley that, you know, which we report on it, um, you know, celestial activities this, you know, significance between these key dates and the prophetic signs that are happening. There's people that are putting it together, but you know what? They still don't know that the so-called white man is the devil. They don't, they still don't know that Esau, Edom is the enemy that the Bible speaks of. You know, you got Edomites reporting on it. They don't even know that they're the devil. They don't know what's going on. They don't understand when was the last time you heard about CBDCs being spoken about in in the news? I mean, as far as I can remember, you know, we've been talking about it. We talk about it a lot, but during during uh, summer to late uh, early fall of 2023, last year, they was talking about it a whole lot. They're not talking about it as much because the stage is set. It's already set up and waiting to be implemented. 
Okay, and that's gonna be one of the major uh, snares and nets and traps that's gonna catch these people. You know, everybody's focused on, you know, most of these people focused on going and seeing, you know, stars and you know, stargazing and sun gazing and all this other shit while Esau is getting ready to make his moves. You know, on the left hand side, spiritual things are taking place and it's going and it's being made manifest in real time. All right, so this marks, you know, this marks a, a era of, of, of. Of chaos, you know, era of, of new beginnings, so to speak, as far as Esau is concerned, you know, because his new beginnings is his one world government, his new world order, you know, and they got an agenda that they want to have accomplished by the by the year 2030, you know, but within this time span, it's not it's not a thing where, okay, 2030, we're going to get started. They've been starting, so they're going to have to ramp it up and amp it up because they know that they got a short time and these people don't know that. They think they're going to rebound and, and society is going to somehow backtrack and everything is going to go back to normal. Things haven't been normal. Things was never normal. Ever since Esau came into power, things were never normal. Okay? Now, the people are starting to realize that shit ain't going back to normal, especially ever since the year 2020. That, that was it. That was the end of these people's normalcy. So, reading on, it says, verse 26, Luke 21 and 26, men's heart filling them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. You know, the heart of a man is his mind, right? Your mind, your, in the Hebrew, the word is love. But your mind, your heart, feeling. People are going to fail. Their understanding is going to fail. They're they going to lose their mind. They're going to bug out. They're going to turn into lunatics. Okay? If the shit that's getting ready to come are gonna is going to turn the most sane individuals, the, mo the more comprehensive individuals, into bug outs. All right? They're going to lose their damn mind. So men's heart is going to be feeling them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Okay? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to keep saying. These celestial events that's taking place. The Heavenly Father is ordaining that. But that's nothing compared to what these people are about to witness. When that enemy. When the enemy makes his move. That's when these people are going to be caught up in that snare. Alright? They've already been led to the led to the trap. You know? Like you got the um the concept of the uh, dangling the carrot over the, over the donkey's head. You know? To lead them in whatever direction. You want the donkey to go with well, these people, they're the donkeys, they're the jackasses, they're the fools, okay? And we the ones that are warning them, the prophets, letting them know that shit is about to hit the fan real soon. You know, it's only a matter of, it's not a matter of if, but when, because it is going to happen. You know, it is going to happen. So men are feeling it for fear and for looking at those things which are coming on the earth. It's going to get that bad, that people, that men are going to fear. They're going to fear. Tell you that in Jeremiah 30 and verse 5. All right. Uh, why do I see men out here with, with their hands on their loins in fetal position? You know, they like this, rocking back and forth in the fetal position through pain, anguish, agony, you know, losing their mind, starvation, famine, plagues, pestilence, diseases, you name it. Okay. They don't know that that's coming. They know that there's shit about to happen. People know, people understand it. There's a feeling in the atmosphere, but that's the spirit that the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is putting on this earth. All right, the whole earth is about to feel the fear of the Lord. So it says, it's going to be, uh, let me read it again. Men's heart filling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The Lord's about to shake shit up. All right, he's about to shake it up. And the powers of heaven, the powers that beat, you saw eat them. All right, the heavens represents what? This rulership. The Lord is going to shake it. How is he going to shake it ultimately? By the way of thermonuclear destruction. All right, that's how he's going to shake it up, but... Prior to that, he's kindling that fire. And we see the Lord kindling that fire. So it says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So after the fact, that's when Yahweh Shah is going to make his return with clouds. And that cloud represents the IFOs, which are identical flying objects, which we know we know them as chariots. Okay, scriptures refer to it um fire by day and a pillar of fire by day and a cloud by night. All right, Esau call them UFOs or UAPs, but that's the chariots, the clouds of the Heavenly Father, which he's coming with reinforcements. Okay? So verse 28 says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. And that's the mindset that we're in. You know, our head is high to the sky, so to speak, as far as we, you know, we're looking up. We're looking for bigger, better, and greater things to be established on this earth. You know? As the enemy is getting ready to roll in like a flood and coming with that destruction and wrath and the masses are going to get caught off guard, we are watching. 
All right, we are watching. That's what I mean. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up. Keep your eyes up. You know, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw nigh. So we know what time we're living in. You know, and it's up to us through the spirit to stay in the spirit and, you know, keep on pushing. So verse 29 says, this the Lord about to speak a parable. It says, and he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, so when you see the the fig, the, the trees, they start budding like we in spring. We well, yeah, we in spring. And in certain places, you're gonna see leaves uh, start budding, you know, flowering, blooming, and so on and so forth, right? Because you know summer is gonna be the next season. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, the prophecies, right? Know ye, know ye that the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. So when we see the prophecies coming to pass, then we know the kingdom is next. All right. And the major prophecies, and we're going to emphasize it and talk about it, is, you know, of course, the destruction. But prior to the destruction, you have the mass implementation of the MOTB. All right. Which is the mark of the beast, which Esau Edom is going to make it mandatory that everybody's going to have to get it. You know, save the Lord's elect, because those are going to be the ones that are not going to get it. Right. But it's going to be a thing where. The whole world is going to have to get tested, especially over here, the, the advanced countries and nations. They all going to have to get it, all right? But the Lord is going to preserve his elect from these things. So that's part of the, the you know, the, the spring and forth that we're watching and looking for. You know, even the signs of the heavens and the correlation that it has with a whole bunch of satanic uh, um, symbolism, you know, a whole bunch of satanic symbolism. I did the video a couple uh what well, days ago about Alistair Crowley and how he had the he got in communication with Satan himself, you know, because Alistair Crowley ain't nothing but a prophet, a priest for Satan. You know, you got priests on the left hand side, you got prophets on the left and prophets on the right. All things are made in twos. You know? If the prophets on the right is saying what the Lord revealed to them to say, it's gonna come to pass. It's gonna be faithful and true. Now if on the left hand side, Esau is getting revelation, which the Heavenly Father, we read the book of Job, Satan worships and serves the heavenly father he serves his purpose and he's um coinciding with the physical counterpart which are the edomites so yeah they get revelations from satan you know and they do what they gotta do the top warlocks warlocks witches and magi they all get their revelation from satan satan is, is allowed to do so under the order of yahweh mosah there was only begotten son yahweh shah and that's how that go all right so a lot of shit on the left hand side is already taking place and we about to witness what evil look like because the Lord is about to show it. Okay? So, verse 32, Luke 21 and 32 says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. All right? That generation that was there during the time of the Lord, they're here again today. All right? Everybody's back here again in their lot doing what they're doing, doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, even the wicked. You know? for the set, That's set up for destruction. Even them. So, verse 33 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away. My words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfighting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that that day come upon you unawares. Is that's, that's for the elect. That's for us. Lord willing, I say us as in the hopefully elect. Okay? This is, our, this is a message to us. Take heed that we don't be overcharged with the, the cares of this world, the overconsumption of society and the hell that comes with it. You know, the the... the the gains, the losses, whatever it may be, you know, don't get caught up in it. You know, the spiritual attacks, because them spiritual attacks, they're high right now. You know, they're on a different level, a higher frequency because of the times that we're living in. All right, them attacks, they they real and they here. You know, so beware of all of that. Scriptures say beware the fiery darts of Satan, right? So it says, so that that day do not come upon you unawares, because that's the last thing you want is for it to come upon you unawares, like it is about to do for everybody else. Verse 35 says, for as a snare shall it come, this is the point, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, all right? Everybody, majority, I mean, the masses of people are going to get snared and, and and trapped with what's about to come. These people ain't prepared. They're not prepared. They cannot be prepared because they're not of the elect. The only ones that are prepared for what's to come is the Lord's elect, the 144,000 prophets, the one-third of the nation of Israel, and the, and the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. 
are the only ones that's prepared. Everybody else is gonna get caught. And I don't give a damn if this man is if this man building bunkers, you know, doomsday prepping. You know, he got it all, you know, he stocked up on food, guns, ammunition, medical supplies, whatever, water, it doesn't matter. You know, if he, even if he's in a no, he's a whistleblower, he, he, he's going to get caught off guard because they don't know the, 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 the deepness of what's about to happen. They don't. So it says, for as a sneer shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. You know, so for whatever these people are going to be watching for, um, come... Uh, April 8th, whatever they watching for and whatever expectations they have in mind, whatever it may be, they're not ready. You know, no amount of preparation is going to prepare these people for what's about to come. You know, us on the other hand, what we're doing is we're watching. All right, we're watching. Like the next verse is going to say, verse 36, watch ye therefore and pray always. So that's what we're doing. We're watching. All right, the Lord commanded us to watch, so we're watching. You know, what, what, what's, what's the privacy? What's, what are these people talking about? What are they, what's going on behind the scenes? What's really happening? That's what we're watching for. You know, we're blowing the trumpet and we're admonishing the people to also watch. Okay, watch carefully. Take heed to what's happening. Know what time we're living in. Esau is going to be doing some heavy enchantment during this uh, uh, solar eclipse. It's heavy enchantment. You know, and on the right-hand side, you know, the, the prophets, the men of the Lord, we're going to be in high spirits in Yahweh Hashim, Yahweh Shai, praying, sending up curses on this place. You know, as we always do, regardless of the season, you know, the, the signs and events taking place, we always do that. You know, because Esau is constantly doing that, like the scripture said, accuser of our brethren. He's constantly accusing us on the left-hand side, you know, to try to accuse us before the Father and, and cause snares and, and gins and traps to, you know, be laid before the Israelites, right? So it says, verse 36, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, always pray, always pray, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So that's what we're watching for, we praying for, and in diligence, and, and, and eyes glued to prophecy, the truth, you know, locked into the Spirit at all times, that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All right, because verse 35, let me go back to that. Um, I got the definition in a common dictionary right here. Snare. Very simple definition. It says a trap for catching birds or animals. Yeah, because these people are animals. All right, you saw look at, you, look at these people as animals. You know, uh, you saw look at all of us like animals, uh, uh, cattle, sheep. Okay, like the Lord said, I will deliver you from the um the the, the snare of the fowler, all right? One that catches birds, and that's Esau Edom saying snares left and right, left and right. That, he's known for that shit. That's why Esau's a cunning hunter. He knows how to hunt physically, and he knows how to hunt for souls spiritually because he's a cunning hunter. The Lord put that spirit in him, so he knows how to set traps in the wild to catch whatever he's trying to catch. The prey, all right? He's a predator. And the prey he catches them, and on the left on the left hand side, the spirit he knows how to set snares and trap. To catch the souls of, of, of people in general, Israelites, okay? They're even the righteous, but the Lord ain't gonna allow us to get caught up in them snares that Esau is setting up. And that's why he wanna do away with us. Because we ain't gonna get got by this fucking devil. Alright? So he could be snaring and trapping and setting up gins and all that carnal shit that he want, but he ain't gonna he ain't gonna get away with it. So it says a snare is a a snare is a trap for catching bird animals, typically one having a noose or wire or cord. Or so on and so forth. Now let me tap on the word trap real quick. Now trap, basic definition. It says an unpleasant situation from which it is hard to escape. And that's what's getting ready to happen to these people. They're going to find themselves in a very unpleasant situation. Jacob's trouble is very unpleasant. You know, we, we tear it on because we know that got to happen before we make it to the to the final step. To the next step and then to the final step. So we, we encourage it. We tear it on and we embrace that it's going to happen. Because we know that deliverance is going to happen as well. You know, you saw them be snaring and trapping and setting shit up on pleasant situations so that these people can, can, can fall into his hands. But that's when the Lord is going to start showing miracles, salvation, mercy, you know, to his elect. So come on with it. All right. An unpleasant situation from which it is hard to escape. The scriptures say that they shall not escape. Um, I'm going to get that in a second. It says, uh, let me see something. It says, 
a device or enclosure designed to catch and retain animals, typically by allowing entry, but not exit. So once these people uh, uh, enter this snare, trap, gin, for, for lack of a better term, let me just put it in layman's terms. Once they submit to Esau's will, hence getting the RFID chip underneath their skin. That's the main, that's one of the main traps that he's about to set up. Once they do that, there's no escaping. Okay? Once he do that, there's no escaping. Absolutely no escaping. So keep in mind, all the hell that's getting ready to happen, the shit that this devil's getting ready to pull, is to is, is the method of order out of chaos. Okay? He create the uh, chaos, wait for the people's reaction, and then give them a solution. His order, his new world order. You know, so we ain't ignorant of Satan's devices. So anyway, it says a trap, a device, or an enclosure designed to catch retain animals typically by allowing entry but not exit or by catching hold of a body part, etc., etc. Um, you got some similar words, which is, which are trick, um, a deception, a wild, right? The scripture said, be, be, uh, beware the wiles of the devil, right? His devices. It says toils, a setup, um, trickery, an artifice, a ploy, um, what else? An ambush, a decoy. You know, the chaos that's coming is going to be a decoy into getting these people right where he want them. And the Lord is going to allow because these the, the masses are, are undesirable. Okay? Bait. You know, one of them bait is going to be fair. You know, like the saying go, fear is uh, 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 one of the greatest motivators. When most people are afraid and they're scared, they're motivated. Just like us, we, we, we fear the Lord. So we're motivated to do things to please the Lord, to find mercy and grace in his sight. So yeah, fear is a great motivator. And that's why we went into captivity. The Lord whooped our ass and, and set up the enemy over us. You know, the cargo slave ship, you know, Deuteronomy 28, the curses, that was to put fear in us. And it does work. You know, it works. You know, we could testify to that. Okay, so ambush, decoy, bait, lure, snare, net, cage, prison, um, problem, burden, and so on and so forth. The list goes on. So that's what the devil is getting ready to set up, a snare and a gin. But as the Lord said in Luke 21 and 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. You know, the, your favorite YouTuber that, that blow the trumpet, the whistleblower, that, he gonna get caught up in the snare. If they ain't got the names, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and they're not part of the elect, they gonna get caught up in the snare. Regardless of what val uh, um, valid information they're putting out there. Now, some of them may be spared. You know, I, that's not my call. I don't know. But we know that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We know the bigger picture. Because when this shit go down, that's it. No, no mercy. No mercy. Now is the time to receive mercy. You know, to repent. So that was that. That was that. Let me go to the precepts that I got. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. What, is, what does the word tarry mean? Let's get it real quick. Quick, fast. You know, basic definition. Tarry means to, to, um, hold on. To linger. All right, to linger. To procrastinate, to pause or to delay, to wait, to lag. You know, when you, you got your internet running and it's lagging, you know, you got to, it's buffering and shit. Stop buffering. Stop buffering. Don't be buffering when it comes to your how about you, how shot. Get to it. Hop to it. Hop, skip, and jump to this thing, man. Don't be buffering and lagging and, you know, you, you, start, you know, that, that shit starts to get annoying. You know, when you got something that's lagging and buffering and just taking a sweet-ass time, dragging his foot, you get annoyed at it. How you think the Lord feel? That's why the Lord said I'd rather be hot or cold and not lukewarm. Don't be lagging. If I'm paying for internet, I don't want the shit lagging. You know, it's either it's working or it's not. I'm not one in between. So as you have to call the cable company, tell them, listen, I don't want this shit no more. And then that's when they're going to try to fix the shit and get right, right? But you're like, nah, I don't want it. I'm going to try. I'm going to go with another carrier. So don't be lingering. You know, it's when we go back to the scripture. Make no tarrying. All right? Don't be lingering. Don't be delaying. Don't be... You know, hanging around. That's one of the other words. Hang around. Just hanging around. Just hanging around. I'm just here. I'm here to be here. And that's it. The Lord ain't looking for that, man. Um, like the apostles used to say. I think I think they used to say this one. But I don't, the Lord ain't looking for a third titty. 
you know, a third titty, you know, I, I was fucking back in the day, you know, a third titty, like, well, of course, women got two breasts, like, you know, what's that movie, Total Recall, she, the one chick had a third titty in the middle, what the hell you need a third titty for, you know, just hanging around, don't be a third titty hanging around, for no damn purpose, okay, so make no charity in the turn to the Lord, and some, op some, um, some other words, what is this, let's see, the opposite of that is to hurry, to rush, Okay, hurry and rush, just like I say, hasten the coming of the day of our Lord. Haste when you make haste, man. They say, "Yo, make haste, man. Come on, let's go. Hurry up, let's go." You know the finish line is right ahead of us, and we see what's going on, but these people don't. So anyway, it says, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, meaning repent. All right, repent. Put off your sins. Put off your past sins, and and don't sin no more. Feel sorry for what you did. You went off. You go. You go. Went off. You go off. Now move on. Keep on moving. Don't do it again. Okay. Make no tarry to the Lord and put not off from day to day. What you can do today, don't wait for tomorrow to do it. And that's 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 Israel's problem. That's Yashirah's problem. I always want to wait. I always want to wait. That's that, and that, that listen, everybody's watching Israelites on this thing. How many times you don't wait it and delay the inevitable? Like if you got a bill to pay, why wait the last minute or wait 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 for the last? Your shit to get cut off. Now you're getting charged with a, uh, a a service fee, a late fee. You know, I mean, been there, done that. Shit, sometimes still happens. But that's 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 a fucked up mindset. But that's Israelite. That's the Israelite fucked up mindset when it comes to serving the Lord. They wait till they get jacked up, and we have to learn that. We all have to learn that. But Jake wait for shit. It's too late. You know, they wait for it's too late. Jake wait for Jake wait for the eviction notice, then try to say, all right, all right you know, I'm, let me get right, let me do it, let me let me let me. I'm going to pay my bills. It's too late. Court order's already established. You know, judgment is already coming. So don't be waiting for the last minute. Because it is going to be such thing as too late. Okay? So make no tarry in the turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. You know, suddenly. That's one of the words. Suddenly. Because this destruction is going to be suddenly. You know, it is going to be suddenly. And and I know, we know for sure through the Spirit that what's coming real soon in the near future especially, you know, with the signs that the Lord is showing us, it's going to mark a change to the way things are going to be. You know, yeah, whatever happens, happens. But we're not saying that on that day, you know, all hell is going to break loose. That would be nice. That would be nice. I would, that would be great. You know why? Because what's the year called? Hopeful year of Jacob's trouble coming to pass. So you're damn right that's going to, that is going to be something to, you know, worth knowing. You know, a, 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 a major event and turning point in prophecy, you know, a major event, bro. I mean, that would be nice. That would be nice. You know, that would be nice. I just say it like that, you know, the Lord will. You can only pray and hope that the Lord hurry this thing up. But we know certain things got to happen first, you know, the MOTB got to be implemented. Um, you know, shit still got to happen. Things still got to happen. But suddenly it can happen. That's the key word is suddenly. Suddenly things can take a turn for the worst for this society. So just stay on point and stay watching. That's what we're doing. We watching blowing the trumpet in Zion and sounding that alarm in the Lord, Lord's holy mountain. Okay? So suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security, when these people think they secure like they do now, they think they secure because they could eat, you know, they could drink water, you know, they could, they could work. You know, they could work. Shop, you know, Netflix and chill, eat, you know, go out to dinner. They ain't security, you know, collect a paycheck. What's going to happen? It says, in, and in thy security, when you think you're secure, thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And that's what the Lord is getting ready to bring. Bottom line, all hell is getting ready to break loose, and these people don't know. That's why for us, like the scriptures say, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. We have the wisdom, we have the knowledge. What, what's the wisdom? The wisdom and the instruction of the scriptures. We have the knowledge, meaning we know. We know. To have knowledge means to know. So we know what's going to go, go down, and we have the understanding of why it's happening. You see? So it's going to be a different approach when it comes to the Lord's elect. But for these people out there, they're going to bug out. They're going to bug all the way to hell out. Okay? Let me read this real quick. In the book of Amos, chapter 5, and verse 18. Excuse me. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. 
What want you? Matter of fact, I be watching these videos, right? You know, these informative videos, preppers, whistleblowers, so-called people that get on um, inside information. You know, a lot of these people be straight up capping and lying, talking about they getting inside information. Who's who's really gonna fact check and back up their sources? So, you know, they do that for clout and views too. You know, somebody just told me, yeah, you know. This guy that worked at the CDC, top executive. Nigga, you ain't nobody to be connected to somebody at the top top of the line. So these, these I'm just saying, they be gaslighting. They be lying, you know, but whatever. It's cool, whatever. Anyway, you know, you watch those type of videos and then you go to the comment section. Everybody talking about pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody get right with Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming soon, you know, whatever, whatever. We know your house shot is coming, all right? People expecting a Jesus Christ. These same people that's expecting a Jesus Christ, you... You tell them the image of the Lord and what he looks like, they they, they hate, they don't want to hear that. So, strike one, they don't even know who to look for. That's why they're going to get caught off guard when they see a so-called black man, dark-skinned man, dark melanated young man, cracking the clouds, standing on a giant UFO with other UFOs following him, white hair, woolly hair, beard, you know. They're going to get, they're going to bug the fuck out. They're going to bug out because they was expecting Cesare, you know, they were expecting gentle Jesus to come floating through on rainbows, you know, and, 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 and nimbus clouds, you know, so they're going to be fucked up in the game. So that's why it says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, because you don't know the power that's coming. You don't know the power that's coming. I'm not talking about you, I'm saying they don't know the power that's coming. And they don't know the buildup uh, to the events or, or, or buildup of the events that's going to take place before that, that power returns. They don't know. That's why I said, woe be unto them. But we know, we know, we understand. And through that understanding, we, we fear the Lord and we're preparing ourselves, you know, like the, like, the, um, like the bride, preparing herself for the bridegroom. When the bridegroom comes, the bride is prepared, and uh, adorned, looking beautiful, pretty, you know, gorgeous. You know, she took care of herself. She pampered herself. So, you know, the, 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 bride, the bridegroom come now and he's ready for the wedding. You ain't sitting here putting on you know, your lipstick and makeup and, and, and trying to get your hair and, you know, look all pretty and shit. You've been ready. You wait. You you sitting there ready at all times because the bridegroom's ready to kick in the door and take his brides with him. You know, like the scripture said, enter into the loud chamber while the indignation be overpassed. So the bridegroom is getting ready to come and snatch his bride. You see? While everybody else is out here lost in the source. So we want we want to be that bride that's prepared for whenever the bridegroom come and crack them clouds. We want to be ready. There ain't gonna be no Salaki Lord. Can I just can I just put on can I just make sure these shoes fit real quick? You know, try you know, can I let me no, no, none of that. You know, make sure you on point. That's it. But unto these other people, they don't even know. They don't even know. So it says, Woe unto you that desire to give the Lord. To what end is it for you? So what's gonna be your end? What's gonna be these people end talking about they can't wait for Jesus to come? They don't even know who they don't know who's coming. You know, they, they lost in the source. They're done. It says, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. When Yahweh shall actually come, it's going to be dark. You know, the, the, the chariots is going to cover the skies. You know, it's going to be a dark, gloomy environment. You know, like you got a dark, stormy day. That shit ain't got nothing on what Yahweh Shah is coming with, man. You know, and on top of that, after the Lord, after all is said and done, when the Lord shoots nukes, you know, and the fire from the, the laser beam from the chariots, you know, all that is gonna, all that is gonna bring more darkness to this world as we know. You know, on top of the darkness that's already here. So it says, not light, as if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went to the house and leaned his hand on a wall, and a serpent bit him. So you escape, you escape a lion and find yourself trying to slap box with a bear. You know, you, you, it's not gonna happen. I Meaning you gonna leave one danger. You may escape. A person may escape. Famine, because now they, now they just turn into cannibals. But you know what? They done made it all the way through. They done ate human flesh and just totally abased themselves just to survive. A new, just to survive to make it to the point where they're going to be destroyed in a nuclear attack in World War Three. You know? That's what the Lord is coming to do. The scriptures say um, about they that escape the hunger shall the, shall the sword destroy. Okay? Or this person that says, or went into a house and leaned his hand on a wall and the serpent bit him. So now you're escaping, you, you leave, you, you find yourself out of one calamity. You know, you escape a bear, a lion, and somehow you 
catching your breath, leaning on the wall, and then a uh, damn uh, uh, viper them bit you. You know now now you now you poison. Now you're dead. Now you got slow death. Now you got slow death. So you know like the saying go, a million ways to die, choose one. So anyway, it says verse twenty. Shall not the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? That's gonna be the day of our Lord, man. Darkness and not light. And these people, they don't know that. You got people thinking that they're gonna be raptured before anything happened. They out they damn mind. You know, which the word rapture comes from the word rape, which means to be taken by force. You know, the, the ones that are gonna be taken, taken up is gonna be the elect. You know, those that make it. There ain't gonna be no pre-rapture type of event that's going to happen to so that these people don't see the tribulation. No. We clearly know that the scriptures say, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. So we know that tribulation must happen. So so when it does happen, we ain't out here bugging up. Why, why is this happening? We know why it's happening. All right? This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, Go and ye shall receive. Pray for few days unto you. That they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. That's the mindset. That's the spirit that went in. All right. We're praying for a few days. We, that's why we, you know, we 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 uh, enthusiastic about, you know, fanatics for this truth because we 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 praying for a few days. Like Lord, please destroy this place. Destroy this place. Let's, let's, let's get it going. You know, let's get it going. Why? Because we know that the kingdom is already prepared for you. Like Yahweh Shah said that he go to prepare a place for, for us, for you. In John 14, right? And it's been, in the heavens, it's been two days. But for us, it's been like 2,000 years, around 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, you know? So that's 2,000 earth years, man years, you know, human years, so to speak, that the Lord has been preparing, you know, these different, you know, galaxies, king, you know, the kingdom itself, like the, like the Lord's Prayer. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, which is righteousness, glory, the kingdom. So it's already prepared. You know, we're just waiting to manifest it on planet earth. You know, so, but we praying that the days be shortened. Like it tells us that in Luke, um, Matthew 24, and verse 22. Except them days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Because the devil is going to come with great wrath, knowing that he have a short time. Let me read this. Psalms 35. And I'm going to start at verse. Psalms 35. And I can start at the top. It says, Psalms 35 and 1. The Psalm of David. Please my, plead my cause, O Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. We have enemies, all right? Two thirds are our enemies. Esau is our enemies. Esau is our enemy. The heathens are our enemies. So Esau, the nations, and two thirds, those are our enemies. And the Lord is going to fight up against them because they fight against us. And we fighting for Yahweh Shah, so really they're fighting against Yahweh Shah. So the Lord is going to defend his own self by defending us. You know, the Most High is going to defend his own self by defending those that are defending him. So our enemies don't stand a chance. Especially these damn devils. You know, Esau, Edom, and the gang. So verse 2 says, Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help, especially when all hell break loose. Matter of fact, since I read that, let me read this real quick in 2nd Ezra. I was just reading 2nd Ezra chapter 2 and 13, but I also got it right here in front of me in my apocrypha. So let me read verse 26. It says, As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them um, from among thy number. All right? The Lord is going, the, the, the servants is talking about the elect. Not one of the elect is going to perish. They will be required from among thy number, among the number of the children of Israel. There's always going to be a remnant that's going to be saved. All right. So it says, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, for thou shalt be merry and have abundance. So don't be troubled. All right. And that's that's the word. That's the message. When the days of trouble come. All right. Don't be weary. For when the day of trouble and heaviness come, because great heaviness is coming. 
All right, the Dao of Temptation ain't gonna be a, it's just a lot of Dao walking apart. Okay, this is gonna be a heavy moment. Just like you go through your spiritual attacks, you go through your spiritual lows, and it feels heavy unto you, well, amplify that when the whole world is catching it. You know, when 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 shit is happening, when things are in motion, amplify that. You know, put yourself in that position, your mind in that position, and, and imagine how it's gonna feel. Okay, but don't worry about it. It says, be not weary. But when the days of trouble and heaviness coming, others shall weep and be sorrowful. So other people are going to be weeping, you know, like the Tyler video. These people don't know what's about to go down, but they're going to be weeping. They're going to be mourning. They're going to be sorrowful because they ain't going to have answers. They're not going to have guidance. They're not going to have understanding. They're not going to have wisdom. So they're going to be bugged out. All right. It says, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. But the scriptures say we're going to be merry and have abundance. Not say we as in the hopefully elect. You know, and I, the scripture said, you, you know, we got to have that confidence with humility, confidence be with faith, but at the same time, humble. You know, scripture say that um, he that served the Lord must believe that he's a reward of him, of, of, of him or them that diligently seek him. You know, so that's that's our mindset. These people are going to be bugged out, you know, but we're going to be all right. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be, excuse me, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, save the Lord. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. All right, see what? The grave, hell, you know, death, the missiles, destruction. You know, the destruction that's coming upon this place. Not not, not no hell, no fairy tale hell, where, you know, the Catholic, the, with the Catholic Church and the Christian Church teach. No, okay? The destruction that's getting ready to happen. So let me go back to Psalm 35. It says, take hold, verse 2, take hold. Of shield and buckle and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. All right, which uh, starting with these devils. It says, "Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation." Which name Yahweh Shai? He's the deliverer. All right, through him we got salvation. It says, "Let them let them be confounded and put to shame and seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt." Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery. And let the, imagine that dark and slippery. You can't even catch yourself if you start slipping because it's so dark. You don't know what to hold on to, what to grab. It's, just, it's utter confusion. You're slipping in a dark place. Imagine that. Imagine slipping and sliding in this completely dark. Imagine the fear and the, 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 the unknown, the fear of the unknown, and just no support, no help, no nothing. It says, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net and pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. All right, starting with, again, start with our enemies. These, from Esau, mainly Esau, you know, and then you got two thirds that try to snare and put Jake in a net in a trap, but fuck them. All right, once Esau go down, so will all we, so will these niggas, all right? So, so read Luke, um, excuse me, Mark chapter 13 and 33, 33 and then I'm going to get a couple precepts off the common board, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it out. It says, Mark 13 and 33, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. And that's why we watching, because we don't know when the time is. Imagine, they, imagine you knew exactly what time, or imagine these people knew exactly what time, date and everything. They're going to be doing their bullshit, and then when that day come, all of a sudden they're going to try to get right and repent. You know, like they got an alarm clock, a timer, like they got a timer on the Lord. You know, like they got a calendar set up to when the Lord, you know, start getting ready to do shit and he get ready to come. That's the day that they're going to check in. No, we got to check in every day. Check in daily to make sure that we watch and we on our watch because this shit can crack at any moment. The stage is set. What more need to be done? What more need to be set up? The stage is set. All right? Everything is there. The dominoes are already in place waiting to collapse one by one. So what more needs to happen? The, the chip is already set up. MOTB. There's so much different disasters and crises waiting to happen. You know? That's already there. It's laid out. They could do anything. You know, all types of crises, this crisis, that crisis. Last year it was called the year the poly crisis, which means many crises. You know, so 
she could pop off at any moment. So that's why I take he he take he he and watch and pray. He know not when the time is come. Okay? So that was that. Now I'm gonna go to the comment board. Before I do that, give me one moment. Let me step off for a second. about that so let me um slide over to the comment board and get my precepts and yeah how about you me out shy broke a thumb to the Akim out there and yeah how about you me out shy broke a thumb to the few since the aqua and listen to learning in silence shalom to you <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna get a couple and then that's gonna conclude this lesson This is um, faithful, wonderful, for hopeful elect. And we put up Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And that's our job. We're the watchmen. The Lord set up watchmen that will, the scripture say that, that will not hold their peace day nor night. You know, day nor night, not holding our peace. So whatever we... We see something, we say something in righteousness, all right? When we see prophecy, we say prophecy. If we see some shit happening, you know, Jake going off and, and teach, you know, misconstruing the doctrine and something happening, you, you see something, you say something, all right? And that's what the Lord set us up to do, you know? We're not, we're not, uh, you know, dumb dogs. We bark. Scripture said dumb, uh, what is that? Deadline is better than a dumb dog. So verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You know, like like the saying, oh, yo, take it and run with it. You know, take take what we saying and hold it dead, hold it fast, hold on to it. Take it and run. Take it and run with it. You know, the prophecies, because this is what's getting ready to happen. Everything that we've been saying from the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the elder bishops who taught us his truth, you know, the elder brothers and teachers and prophets that are teaching you the truth. Listen, this is these are the times. You know, don't fold now. Don't fold the paper bag now. Because these are the times we said what's going to happen, that they said what's going to happen, that the prophet said what's going to happen, and we're telling you. So don't fold now. Everything that we do and go through is a smaller test or a smaller quiz, if you may, to prepare us for the great test that's getting ready to happen. All right? So, for the vision is yet from the point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Go it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right, like I brought the word tarry to make, uh, 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 make no tarry in the turn to the Lord. Don't be delaying, don't be lagging. The prophecies ain't going to lag. All right, it ain't going to delay, it ain't going to lag. It, you know, once the scriptures tell you, once um, like a woman in the ninth month in the Apocrypha, once them pains start coming, they're going to start coming. They're going to start coming. The world's about to feel pain. The world's about to feel pain. It ain't going to tarry no more, man. We in that time. You know, we in that time. GMS Straight Gate Bob put up. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, straight to the point. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Sudden. Sudden. It's going to be sudden and it's going to be destructive. It's going to come upon them. And like it says, as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right? <laughs> peace and safety. You know, and in that security shall not be destroyed, like I read earlier. So when they think it's all good, when they think it's peaches and creams, that's when shit going to pop off. Right now, people, people are secure right now. People secure. Yeah, there's, uh, there's instability and there's, there's people on edge. Not everybody. Majority of people still sleeping. Majority will always be still sleeping. You got few people. Those that know versus those that don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a smaller number of those that know versus those that don't know. So the majority of people are in their security. 
as long as they could go and get a Big Mac and a dollar, you know, they still got a dollar menu. As long as they could get that, they good. That's why the scriptures say, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. As long as people can eat, they don't give a shit about nothing else. And that, as long as people got like a crackhead, you give a crackhead drugs, he more concerned about that damn crack than food. You know, and, and, and the food is these people's crack. So they more concerned about food, not GMO crack food, than anything else. As long as they can eat, they good. As long as they can smoke that pipe, they good. That's how these people are. You know, you saw got the mass scientists got them strung up on fake food. You know, so they're good. These people don't know how to fast. The only time they fast is when they're sleeping, and they still gotta wake up and eat. You know, so wait till wait till that food crisis come, man. Wait till them truckers, man. Listen, gas prices going skyrocket. Things are going to change. If gas price skyrocket, so so will whatever hit the shelves. Once gas prices skyrocket. Everything as you know it is going to go up because how you think we get what we got? This, this camera phone, you know, the, the TV, the, this apartment, the shit, you know, whatever. Everything, houses, you know, plants, everything. Fucking trucks. They bring them in. Soil, you know, shit like that. It's anything. You know? So it says they shall not escape. Okay, now is that. Let me read, um, let me get, a, get a few more. You know? Things are gonna skyrocket, man. Things are gonna skyrocket. The cost to build things, material, everything, everything is just gonna go up. And that's gonna put, you know, work, work is gonna cease. That's why the scriptures say that um, um, the grinding shall cease. Work is gonna cease. People ain't gonna be working no more. All right. Inflation is about to catch up to all that print. All that printing you saw been doing is about to catch up to the people. All right, it's all about to catch up. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 27 and 26. It says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that set a trap shall be taken therein. See that? Whoso diggeth a pit, Esau is digging a pit, and guess what? He gonna be taking his own pit that he set up. All right. That was basic, brother. Basic wisdom had put that one up. This is um pillars of Benjamin, Ecclesiastes twelve and one. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. All right, so remember the Lord now while, while, while you can, while things are still intact. Get this word right, right now as you can before the evil days come. All right, before all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is blotted out of society and the Lord refrain his prophets from speaking his word. Get it now. All right, there's a, there's a movie coming out. I don't know where, I don't know where, when it's coming out, but, you know, brothers... The videos on it. I might, I might upload the trailer to my other page, but it's a whole movie they got coming out talking about they're gonna ban the Bible and the Bible is becoming outlawed and it's a weapon and blah blah blah, whatever. All the, you know, you know, you saw how we do. You know, so will the internet, the word, freedom of speech, all of that is gonna be blotted out too because the Lord is gonna put an end to it. All right. So that was that. Let me get a couple more and that's going to end it. I'm going to read this. We all know this preached up by heart. Jeremiah 30 and 7, Prince Yannazar put this up. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right? That time is coming. The hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. The hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. This is Ezekiel 7 and 14, Pillars of Benjamin. It says, they have blown the trumpet. The they is talking about the watchmen, the prophets. Even to make all ready. But none go to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. So people, you know, we blowing the trumpet, but the majority ain't going to take heed. They ain't ready for battle. They just not prepared. They're unprepared. And that's, see, that's Jake's problem. Jake is the most unprepared nation under the face of the earth. You know, never prepared for nothing. Never prepared. They wait for last minute to try to get right and try to get ready. 
You know, if, they, if, if we, you know, there's a food crisis now, you're going to see how much niggas going to be at the store trying to get some shit, turning shit up, because they ain't got nothing. You know, I'm totally unprepared. You know, they make sure they got their weed. You know, they make sure they got their liquor and shit, but when it comes to certain things, they ain't got it. How much more this understanding? Verse 15 says, The sword is without a pestilence, and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. It says, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. It says something uh, quite similar in the book of uh, Jeremiah. You know, they that are in the city shall the sword, I'm sorry, they that are in the city, or they that are in the field shall the sword destroy. And they that are in the city, famine is going to destroy him. There's nothing new under the sun. Those that are in the, in the cities, the major cities, then pestilence is going to hit. You know, that's the perfect place for Esau to release a biological weapon. You know, because the, where, where you got the majority of the people at, that's the greatest place for, for a spread to take place. Now, these people flee in the city to try to go into the suburbs and carrying pestilence with them. You see, so that's the best place to target. You know, the most populated areas. And the Lord is going to target them areas. So it says, and they that are, uh, I'm sorry, read one more time. The sword is without the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. You know, the field like, represents the suburb. You know, these people won't die with the sword. The modern day sword is the gun. You know, a lot of these areas, you know, allow, you know, open carry, whatever. The, the gun laws are, you know, a lot less strict. So this is going to be all out war. Egyptian against the Egyptian with sword in their hands. Even in cities, like they show you in Bushwick. That's why Texas, in the movie Bushwick, invaded New York. Because New York, like the, like the nigga that got caught, the East Edomite that got caught, said, you know, he, when he got caught by um, the main actor, he said, um, why are you here? He was like, because New York wasn't, he wasn't expecting New York to have all these guns, you know, or weapons or firearms, you know? Wherever you, wherever Jake gonna be and, you know, people gonna be, there's gonna be weapons. All right? There's gonna be crimes, there's gonna be chaos. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a rough, it's gonna get rough out here, man. It's gonna get rough. You know, these people are gonna lose their wits, lose their minds. You know, people are gonna, they're gonna buckle, they're gonna buckle. All right? Grab up a couple more. This is Matthew 24 and verse Matthew 24 and verse 45 through verse 46. Put up by David too. It says, Who then is a faithful? Matter of fact, let me see. I'm gonna start up 24 and 24 and 42. It says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up so who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his lord had made rule over his household to give them meat in due season blessed is that servant whom the lord when he cometh shall find doing so like the, i made the analogy of the bride the bridegroom the bride is preparing herself making sure she's ready all right the same this this ain't that type of game where this ain't a game at all but this ain't that type of party where you know, you know, like a man go to pick up his date, you know, pick up his woman, his, his lady or whatever, and he give her a time. I'll be there at seven o'clock. And then she's still in the house getting ready, you know, waiting seven days past, eight o'clock, still putting on makeup and getting ready. No. You either ready or you're not. All right? And we the bride that's gonna make sure we ready. So when your house shot does appear, you ain't got no get you ain't, you ain't no ain't gonna be no get ready. You know? Like the same go, stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. Okay. This is um Amos eight and eleven. Behold, the days come, save the Lord, and I'm ending on this. It says, Behold, the days come, save the Lord. Power Yahweh by Shimi Shah that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. All right. Excuse me, that's the famine, that's the, the, the shortage that's getting ready to come. The only ones that are going to have it is going to be the elect. 
right? The believers, the true believers in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Everybody else will be lost. They'll be lost in the dim source, you know. But for us, you know, we're preparing ourselves spiritually, more, most importantly, spiritually, more importantly than anything else, right? Spiritually preparing for what's about to come down the wire. All hell's getting ready to break loose. Jacob's trouble's getting ready to pop off. Actual famine is getting ready to come. The word of the Lord going throughout the four corners of the earth via the internet, us, the street ministry, all of that eventually will come to an end because Babylon is coming to an end. All right, Babylon the Great is coming to an end, and the Lord is getting ready to do it. So that's pretty much it, you know. Like I said in the title of the video, the majority of these people don't even know what's about to happen. And when it does, watch them bug out. Watch them bug out. Be thankful that you ain't bugging out because they gonna bug out. So that's it. I pray and hope to you. How about Shemir? How about Shai? About Shemir Kaku Dash. This was an edifying lesson to the elect of the nation of Israel. Exhorting through the Spirit, you know, and messages, watch and pray. Watch and pray always that you enter not to temptation, like the Lord said, right? Because the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So watch and pray always, man. So with that, all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rakakudash, double honors to the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone who told me it's true, and salutation to the elect scattered brought throughout the four corners of the earth. Till next time, Shalom.